Hi, this is Kim Watson reporting for Easy Trader. This is an exclusive review on the week ahead prepared for forexbase.com. Okay, so which is the what is, should I say, the one story that could bring down the markets? Well, it's the US budget deadline. Well, according to many anyway. Reality is that the US budget deadline should be agreed by the deadline of the 30th of September at midnight US time. If it's not agreed by that time and no budget's agreed, by the 17th of October it's suggested that the US won't be able to fulfil its obligations and pay its workers, etc. And there would be, obviously, then a complete meltdown in the equity markets and the bond markets would go flying. Reality is probably something different to that uh, in terms of, we've seen this before around budget deadlines where they haven't always been met it's overrun but there has been an agreement made eventually what's it, what's it mean for the markets well of course equities could be sitting there pretty shaky as we were running into the week certainly the current the currencies themselves could be pretty volatile at times although quite often when we're waiting for things like this we we, we see this sort of pause and a sideward action with some volatility on speakers comments etc so we'll probably look forward to Monday afternoon with interest to see how things pan out and obviously running into midnight Tuesday or midnight Monday night which uh, be early hours five o'clock in the morning some of that time UK time to see what actually comes of this but if it does roll over it rolls over it's, it's been known to do before so it wouldn't be the first so aside of that, the other key events this week coming forward is the UK manufacturing PMI figure expected at 9.28 on Tuesday morning. Uh, the forecast is yet another growth figure of 57.5 versus 57.2. This manufacturing figure has become ever more, more important than the services figure in reality as the US, US UK uh, government are hoping for manufacturing to become a much better bigger part of the GDP figure as opposed to services which we were so reliant on at the moment. We'll see, but it's uh, it's already had five positive surprises over the past five months, so can this be a six? Um, we followed this by obviously the US figure, manufacturing figure coming out at three o'clock in the evening, afternoon even. Um, again, it's well it, with this one it's expected to fall off a little bit, 55.3 versus 55.7. No guess as to what's going on with either of these figures, but there's there's quite a lot of waiting, as I say, coming on to the, particularly the UK figure there now, and any sort of miss to the downside could see that the pound sold off quite significantly. Uh, a rally, well, it might move up a little bit, but we did have a reasonable rally last time. We did we got about a 40 pip move actually uh, in last month, so we'll see how that runs. But imp very important figure. Uh, moving on to Wednesday then. And we got the UK construction figure out at 9.30. Uh, it's been running up pretty well. Forecast is expected 60.1 versus 59.1. We do get a bit of a movement off this, but it's not a massive mover in general. And then later on in the day, we've got the e uh, ECB interest rate decision at 12.45. Well, I think it's been pretty well flagged that there's no, not going to be any interest rate decisions or movement for some time, certainly not to the upside. And very very unlikely to the downside. All in all, I think we've we've had that pretty well uh, signposted. Then there's the US ADP non-farm payrolls. It gives us an idea. But it's not a very good idea, but it's an idea of what may occur on Friday in the proper non-farm payrolls. Uh, it's a smaller sample, but it can create a bit of movement. Saying that of late, the movements reduced to about 20-30 pips uh, each time. Uh, whereas it used to be quite a bit more. Now, then, in the uh, le uh, later in the afternoon, at one thirty, we've got President Draghi speaking, and he's quite a dove. He's been quite a dove last event. He's, he's, he's got the markets rallying uh, in the last but one, I think it was, uh, when he spoke. But the, uh, lately, he's been sort of talking down the euro somewhat. And I wouldn't be surprised to see, actually, he's been talking it down, so maybe maybe this time he talks it up a little bit more. We'll see. But uh, he is a classic master of talking it down, and we'll just have to wait and see what happens there. But we do generally get somewhere to about 80 pip movements when he's speaking, so it should be interesting for trading. 
Thursday then, moving on, UK services PMI, it does form the, the, the basis of the largest amount of the GDP figure, if you like, um, coming out at 9.28, forecast 60.4 versus 60.5 last time, so slight flattening, wouldn't be surprised to see this flattening, it's, it's been rising for quite some time now, in fact I'm just checking here, uh, last, ooh, let me see, eighth in a row positive figure so um, uh, it, it's uh, possibly in, if, it, if it was to rally again it'd be the ninth in a row so the, it, it's, it's been running up for some time now US non-manufacturing figure or services as we'd call it um, PMI uh, coming at three o'clock in the afternoon forecast at 57 versus 58.2 so slight contraction expected there although still growth anything over 50 is uh, on both any of these figures uh, remains growth so it's, it's just that the growth is slowing slightly which wouldn't be a, a, a massive shock I don't think but could get could give some good points movement and then looking ahead then and we've got Friday the US non-farm payrolls biggest biggest figure of the month uh, often gives us some of the best moves that we get uh, expected to come in 179 versus 169 last uh, it, it's just a good mover generally we often see somewhere between 40 to 60 pips uh, move on this um, either positive or negative so we, we don't really care but it certainly can be a mover on Friday okay that's it for me uh, I hope you have a great week and I'll be back next week bye for now